it's fish time. Fritz, you want fish time? Penny, want fish time? Mmm, salmon pate. Gourmet meal. Okay, Fritz, you want fish time? Hmm? Fritz, you want fish time? Penny wants fish time? Are you sure? Are you sure? I don't know. I, I don't know if you're being serious. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, that's for little Fritzel and Pen Pen right here. Penny, you wait. Okay. What a kitty left our fish time. Are you ready to read, Bunny? Hmm? Fritz. He's not a very good listener. What's Penny doing over there? Princess Penny. Penny. Meow, meow, meow. Laser Eye Kitty. See your little birdie, Penny? Penny, so pretty by the window. I'm always pretty, Mama. Yeah, I know. I was just, I was just saying. Hey bunnies, it's day one of the bunny readathon and I thought what better way to kick it off than to reread bunny. So yeah, I decided on annotating the paperback because the hardcover is hard to get. Well, I mean, I have one, but they are kind of expensive. So I want to keep mine clean just in case. And I have my annotating supplies, I have my yellow highlighter and my pink pen. And then I just put the tabs in the back there like that so it's easy for me to pull out while I'm reading. And to have my kitty cat tea, it's Earl Grey with the Dunkin' Creamer. It's the best creamer in the world, seriously, nothing even comes close. We call them bunnies because that is what they call each other. Seriously, bunny. Example, hi bunny, hi bunny. What did you do last night, bunny? I hung out with you, bunny. Remember, bunny? That's right, bunny. You hung out with me and it was the best time I ever had. Bunny, I love you. I love you, bunny. So I just got home from work and I started getting a migraine towards the end of the day. Uh, I've had these for so long. Typically, I get them in the morning, but I also can get them towards the end of the day which sucks because it's like I need to do stuff after work you know I don't want to be like resting up the whole time but anyway I did get a little reading of bunny done on my breaks only I couldn't film anything because there was something going on in the background that was really loud and you probably would not have been able to hear me anyway so I did get to page 35 so not too far in but i am annotating so that's making it a little bit more fun this time around and before i give the kitties their fish time i did just get a package we got some book mail so let's open it up and see what i got oh yeah oh it looks self-published or something maybe anyway it's called the cavern it's by Alistair Hodge, and it's a novella, it's a short one, and this is cave horror, like, like sci-fi cave horror, so 
very excited to read this eventually. I have another video idea that I'm going to do, so I need to be reading some more books like this. Anyway, in the reviews, people said that it sounded really... What the hell is that? Oh my god. It's like a giant bumblebee. Oh. Oh no, no, no. It better not get in here. I'm always paranoid about bugs getting in through like cracks and stuff. That thing was huge. Oh my god. Okay, anyway. What was I saying? Oh yeah, reviews. People said that this was really claustrophobia inducing, like that feeling. So hopefully that is true and this creeps me out. Anyway, it's time for a little fish time for the kitties and then tea time and reading. So I will check in with y'all later. I lied. It's not really that later yet. It's like right after I just filmed that clip. But I forgot to kind of update you a little bit on Bunny. So before I get to all that business I was talking about in Bunny, I just got to the part where she just went over to their smut salon. Um, there's a group of girls. Penny, no, don't do that. There's the group of girls, the bunnies, that she doesn't really like too much. Basically, you know, talks badly about them. But then one day... Uh, Samantha, that's the main character. She's sitting there with one of her friends, Ava, and for some reason they get the bunnies' attention and the bunnies invite Samantha over to the smut salon, but only Samantha. Probably because she's the one in school and she's going to be in their workshop for this writing program. So she's like torn between... Shoot! <sighs> she was torn between wanting to go or not because she's like well i hate them but i also have to be in this workshop with just them and it's four other girls so she's like what's well, going to be awkward if i don't go and you know it's going to be awkward just like last year so maybe i should go and so that is the part where i'm at right now
Sorry for the lighting. I just don't have good lighting where I live, like at all, even during the day when the sun's out. It's not great. Anyway, wanted to give you a quick little update, just on my coffee and toast as you saw, but quick update on Bunny. As you saw, I'm now at part two, and basically she just went through a full workshop with the bunnies. And yes, it does involve real bunnies. I don't want to say really too much because... It's one of those books where really you should go into it blind. Just know that it's a little weird, a bit like a fever dream. I would say a good theme in this book is illusion can sometimes be better than reality. So there you go. And for those of you who have read it, I'm so glad that I'm annotating it the second time around because I've noticed things that were dropped as little hints, um, in particular to her friend Ava. So... I thought that was pretty cool, so I'm looking forward to continuing on with this in my annotations. <sighs> anyway, I am looking forward to continuing this. Hopefully I'll finish it up today, although I am planning on filming two or three videos today. I was going to be uploading my favorite fantasy books of last year, tomorrow, which is Sunday the 31st. But I thought, you know what, I kind of want to do some anticipated April releases, so I think I'll film that today, edit it, get it up tomorrow, and then have the fantasy video up on Wednesday instead. And then after that, I'll have my favorite thrillers of last year. And I'll continue on with my favorites of last year, probably on to, like, favorite YA, favorite lit fic, and nonfic. But anyway... I got some book mail, so let's get into that. I got two packages, so let's see what's in this bigger one. I'm always nervous about using scissors to open packages because I'm scared I'm going to cut into the paper or the covers or something. Okay, there we go. Is this two books? Oh, it's one. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is a very large package. Okay. Ooh, that's pretty in person. The Passage by Justin Cronin, and I got this because, well, okay, this had been on my master TBR, but a viewer had recently commented that this was one of their favorite horror books. It's actually a horror series, and I have The Ferryman. Is it The Ferryman? Yeah, I have The Ferryman by him. That's just a standalone, more like a sci-fi, I think. And since this was on my TBR anyway, and then a viewer had recommended it, I'm like, I'm going to bump that up on my TBR right now. So I will be adding this to my other series that I want to read for this year. So that will be upcoming in another video. I'll talk more about the synopsis then, but this is such a cool cover. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is a little holographic. And it is a little chunky one. Oh no, I bought it. I bought this used. Okay, I only buy like new or very good. And does that look like very good condition to you? The spine is broken? No, this is not very good condition. Normally I get good stuff from half price books, but apparently not in this one. It has like stains all over the papers. Dude, what? Anyway, it's almost 800 pages. And this is not like... I think I'm going to have to have it returned because this is too big of a book to have the spine broken on it. That's ridiculous. Well, that's disappointing. Anyway, let's hope that the second book is in better condition. It's a cute little one. Let's see. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Oh my gosh, how cute. Look, Starve Acre. This is a little book, too. I got this really early. It wasn't supposed to be here until like early or the middle of next week. So I thought I was going to be reading this last for the Bunny Readathon. But it looks like I may be able to read this sooner than I thought. So very cool. And this fits the prompt for a, another horror book with the bunny on the cover. So very excited to get to this. Okay, anyway, I gotta go. The kitties are acting absolutely wild and I gotta prep for some videos. So I will catch y'all later. Oh, quick update. I just filed a claim to return that book because of the broken spine and there's a bunch of stains on the outside of the paper and I thought I was going to have to go to UPS and return it and all of that, but no, they're just going to send me a replacement and I don't have to actually return it. So that is awesome. So I think what I'll do is I'll just pop that book in like a free little library or something and hopefully I'll get my replacement book soon because I need to do that video and I want to wait until I get the physical copy to do that. So that's good news. <laughs> Kind of sucks I have to wait even longer to make that video, so hopefully I can 
work my schedule around that. I am planning on getting some more mail today that has to do with me being able to schedule my videos a little better. If you've noticed, I've been a little better at uploading consistently. I'm trying to be better at uploading on the same day and time every week. I was initially going to do every Wednesday. One video a week isn't really enough, so I'm aiming for two videos a week, but I'm finding that even that is a little tricky, so I don't know. We'll see if I can do three videos a week. We'll see. We'll see, because I have to work full-time, and, you know, I need time to also read, so. But there's so many video ideas. I have that three videos a week would just work the best, so I don't know. We'll see. I'll at least go for at least two videos a week and maybe I'll have a bonus third video a week when necessary. While I was working on editing the video I just filmed, I filmed anticipated releases for April so that way I can get it up right before April starts. And I got another package. So let's open it up. So first up, I got these pens. They're Papermate Inkjoy. They're ballpoint pens. All the colors of the rainbow and black. I like using these for annotating in my books. Well, actually, I initially got these because I write all the books that I've read in this notebook, this like journal thing that I have. Actually, I'll show you real quick, just a minute. One of my sisters, I have three younger sisters, but I have one sister that lives near me. And she got me this really cool gift last year on my birthday, and it says Jules Verne there. And it has a scene from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And what's funny is I had just read this book, and she didn't know it, but she happened to get me this. I'm like, wow, that's so perfect. I love this book. And then it has some of the original text on the front there, but this is in French. And it's just a nice little notebook with the ribbon bookmark. And it has a flap in the in the back of it as well. So what I use this for is I write down all the books that I've read. So I have them colored by genre. So each color means a certain genre. So I write down the title, the author, and the page count. That way it's easy for me to keep track. I like things written down physically, not just digitally. But anyway, I was using the pink one to annotate in my bunny book, and I was like, I'm going to end up running out of ink, so I should get a whole set just for annotating in books. So now I have one set for writing in my notebook all the books I've read, and another set for annotating in books. And this is the other thing I got. Oh, that's so pretty. And this is a 2024 planner. I know we're already into April, but I really needed something like this. This is like a hardcover. I love this scene. It made me think of a place where fairies would live, so that's why I got it. Same scene on the back there. And then a band to close it. And it came with this little bookmark here that you can clip in so that way if you need to make a straight line. You can do that easily. Oh, that's pretty. And it has a little flap on the back there to put stuff in, like a pocket. And then there we go. Now I can start planning out my videos on this instead of just I had like printed out months of the year and I was writing on that, but I was a dumb dumb and I started writing in pen. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. And I had all my videos planned out through like the beginning of May, I think. And then when the Bunny Readathon was announced, I ended up doing the Bunny Readathon announcement TBR video. And then that threw off the other videos that I was planning on filming and posting. So I'm like, you know what, I should probably do that in pencil. I thought there were note pages in this, but I guess not. That's too bad, because I kind of wanted a place to write down all my ideas. Contacts. Oh. Oh yeah, you know what? Since I'm not using this for an actual calendar and just videos, I think what I'll do is just write all my video ideas on here under the contact section. Yeah, that'll work. So very cute, and this will make planning my videos a little bit more fun. Let's 
of who has more mail. Never mind all the background noise. It's such a nice day outside, and you know what that means? All the noise possible is going to be happening out there. I ordered these yesterday, and they came today. I know people say Amazon is evil, but, you know, we don't all have the capability of going and running around to a million stores to get the one thing we need, so... I got these cute little bunny cookie cutters, and I got a sugar cookie mix, and I got this really pretty sparkle gel pink icing, so I'm going to make bunny cookies today, so I'll be showing you guys that. Today is Easter. I don't necessarily celebrate, but because I'm reading bunny and it's Easter, a better way to celebrate than to make pink bunny cookies. been really updating very much on bunny I'm almost done with it though I have about 10 pages left and it's a really good idea that I did a reread on this I've definitely caught on to a few more things and I feel like it is a good book to do that with I mean even another read I would probably get even more out of and also I feel like it's a book that you should mostly go into blind all you need to know is that there is a young girl, young lady rather, who is going to an FMA program and she's kind of an outcast, pretty lonely. She's had a rough time with her home life and she doesn't really fit in with the girls, but one day they bring her in to their little clique and things get crazy, things are good for a little bit and then things just spiral out of control. It is very much like a fever dream. And yeah, I would, I, although I would not just recommend this to anybody, I think there are certain people who I would say, no, that's not for you, don't read it. But I think if you're at all intrigued by it and interested, I would say give it a shot. 
Anyway, the main reason why I pulled the camera out, or my phone rather, that I'm using as a camera, is I got book mail. So, want to see what I got? Oh, I wasn't expecting this one yet. Oh my god, wait, what? <laughs> okay. I saw this book on Book of the Month. And I was like, that looks really good. It's a fantasy. And I added it to my TBR shelf. And then in the reviews, it said, oh, I can't wait for the next book to come out, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, oh, it's a series. Okay, let me see if they have the second book up on Book of the Month. Because if they do, then I'll just get them both there because I want them to match. Well, they didn't have the second one, so I ordered them both off Amazon. And they're both used, very good condition. But nowhere on there did it say that it's the Book of the Month edition. So now they're not going to match because I just wanted the original. <laughs> That's going to drive me crazy. I, that sucks. Ugh. They should have told me that it was a book of the month edition. Like that's not what the picture was. Okay. I know this is really weird, but I'm going to have to sell this or turn it or sell it or something. And I'm just going to get the original first cover because then the second one is not going to be a book of the month edition and it's not going to match it probably won't even be the same size like that's so dumb why did they do that on the back it says i am too dangerous to let live any longer it is written in the book of anku decreed by the high reaper himself death will come to find me but i will no longer be there this is about a lady who is a half british reaper and half japanese shinigami so basically she collects souls to take to hell i think yeah i mean i thought it sounded really good and i was excited for it but now <laughs> this kind of messed me up oh they gave me a little bookmark and it's an alice in wonderland the caterpillar that's one of my favorite scenes the the mad tea party scene and then the caterpillar scene those are my favorite well anyway i'm gonna have to deal with that i guess but let's see what the next one is what oh my god dude i am just getting screwed over like what what okay again i bought a used book but nowhere on the listing did they say it was an ex library book why why do they need to say that I got another Blake Crouch book. It's called Snowbound. This is one of his older ones, I believe. This is a thriller. It's a suspenseful... Oh, it says palpable suspense just keeps building and many thriller fans, especially those who like a touch of horror, will lose sleep to find out how it all ends. Fritz, stop! It says it's riveting, lyrical, haunting, and poignant. Absolutely compelling. Dude, stop. I swear, it's like the second I turn the camera on to film, everything goes to hell. Okay. Anyway, sorry, I can't concentrate on giving this synopsis now, but it's a thriller by Blake Crouch, so I'm excited to read it. Of course, I'll go over that eventually in a wrap-up once I read it. I swear, it's like I will be in a good mood and then turn on the phone to film and then like things happen and it's like so hard to stay in that good mood because the noise outside the cats are going off it's like i have a hard enough time concentrating remembering what i want to say i swear like especially in the sit down videos it's like i swear i can articulate my thoughts just fine but the second i turn on the camera it's like no thoughts head empty like I don't understand. I don't understand why that happens. Okay, is this one a library book too? Because I'm gonna get real pissed. <laughs> okay, this looks normal. Is it? Okay. Ooh, I like the size. I love these small little horror books like this. This is gonna look really nice with my other ones. This is Wilder Girls and this is like a weird vibes kind of book. I'm going to be doing a video where there's different weird vibes books that I want to read or recommend. And this one had kind of been on my radar a little bit. And then what is that? 
Someone using a scroll saw or whatever that is. Cutting a metal pole. <sighs> anyway, this one had been on my radar and then I had seen some reviews and they said something about like things not being explained but then I saw a recent review Angel Can't Read I love her channel I'll link it in the description um she had read and reviewed this book and she said yeah some people say that there isn't an explanation but there is it's just maybe not quite exactly what people may be wanting so maybe it's just a little bit more ambiguous which I'm totally fine with and I don't know it just looks really interesting to me it's like people are being infected by something and their bodies are turning strange and foreign. The woods are wild and dangerous. Someone goes missing. There's horrors beyond the fence. Yeah, so it sounds like good body horror. So anyway, I gotta go. That noise is ridiculous. <laughs> What's up? How y'all doing? I just got home from work and I came home to some book mail and I got my book of the month already. I'm so excited. That came quick. Uh, but anyway, quick reading update. I did finish my reread of Bunny and I tabbed quite a bit in pink, of course. And this was really good. I'm so glad I went ahead and did a reread of this. So I will include more thoughts in my wrap-up, of course, but I really think, like I said in my last clip talking about this, it's really good to go in blind. However, I would not recommend it to everybody. There are definitely adult things happening in this, being talked about and happening, so I wouldn't necessarily say everybody should read it, but if you're okay with some adult things and you're okay with the blurring of illusion and reality and you think that's a fun concept, I do recommend Bunny. It is hyped for a reason. And so I have started my read of All's Well by the same author, Mona Awad. I have read, I'm about right here. I've only read like the first couple chapters. And we're following a theater professor, Miranda Fitch. And she has major chronic pain issues in her back and it also goes down her leg and it really affects her and she is trying to put on this play all's well that ends well only her cast or students they are not wanting to do that they want to put on something else instead and they're kind of fighting her on it and you see her internal monologue while she's trying to battle the pain trying to keep herself together and put on you know a put together face for her students but then also she is struggling because she sees these I think she's 37 in the book but she sees her students and they're all like early 20s probably and they're all young and agile and flexible and no health issues and so she's struggling with that because she's really jealous of that she's like man you know you guys have it so good so that's about where I am so far and unless I missed it, I don't think we know yet why she wants to put on All's Well that ends well so badly. There has to be a reason for it. She did say that it's a lesser known play, like people don't usually put on that play. So she wanted to do one that wasn't one of the popular ones. So I'm wondering, like, what is the deeper reasoning for that, you know? So before we get into my new book mail, quick update on the things I got I think it was yesterday. Yeah, I think it was yesterday. I got Snowbound by Blake Crouch. It was the ex library copy. They didn't tell me that's what it was. And I was doing a little whining about it because <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't want this. And mainly because it's not going to match my other hardcovers by him. None of his other hardcovers have this plastic on it. It's Book of the Month edition. So that was going to bother me. But also, uh, I'm very sensitive to the way things feel. And. 
inside here I don't know if you could see that it's like the old light oh I don't even touch it it's the old library card but they like halfway ripped it off and it's this really rough dry feeling and every time ah, oh it like it makes me feel weird just to look at it I don't like it I don't know if anybody else is like that word like I don't want to touch paper if my hands are dry like if I wash my hands I have to put lotion on before I touch paper like people at work are trying to hand me something like nope nope <laughs> you gotta wait I gotta put lotion on I'm not touching that yet oh it drives me crazy but I don't know that was another reason why too so every time I open it and I feel that uh, I mean the outside it feels okay I kind of like the plastic again it's just not gonna match my other copies but I really do want to read it so I might just read it and if I really like it then I'll just get a better copy of it and an update about this book how I got the book of the month edition and how it wouldn't match the second book because book of the month doesn't have that uh, so I filled out a return request and I was gonna return it apparently it just qualifies for one where they just send you the replacement you don't have to return it I'm like yes that is awesome now I don't have to box this up go drive to UPS or walk to UPS store and send it back and then wait and blah 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 so they're just gonna send me a brand new copy Oh wait, no, that's not it. They're not sending me a replacement. They're just re refunding my money. That's right. They're refunding my money without me having to return it. So I ordered a brand new copy. That's what I did. I'm like, I don't want to mess around with that anymore. I don't want to risk getting another book of the month edition for my used book. So I just got a brand new copy. So that way it won't be this edition. So I mean, that works out because I get a refund for this. So I'm just using that money basically towards the brand new one, which, you know. So I don't think I'll sell this one since it's basically free. That's not really right to do. I think I'll probably put it in a little free library. Wait, no. Ah, I'm not really near a free little library anymore. I may have to donate it to the library. Yeah, there's a library that's like a 15, 20 minute walk for me, which is really cool. Some people say, well, if there's not a free little library in your area, you should start one. No, y'all don't know my area, but that wouldn't work, okay? <laughs> that would not work. I don't know if there would ever be books in there. There'd probably be a bunch of kids books, if anything. And also it'd probably get trashed, like straight trashed. Like, no, that wouldn't work. So yeah, probably donate this to the library. But anyway, onto the fun stuff. Got a new book today. Let's see what it is. Now it's really difficult to film right when I come home because the kitties are like all riled up and stuff. Usually I wait until later when they like settle down a little bit. Like when I do my regular filming for my sit down videos. I usually have to wait a little bit. Wait, what book is this? Oh! Oh wow! Oh that's beautiful and it's little too. That's why it threw me off for a second. Oh my god. Oh that's so beautiful. I love this. I love this cover and this is a cover where I've seen the special editions and I'm like the original's better. It's City of Stardust. It's by Georgia Summers. Oh my god I just love that. I know some people say it's kind of basic but I like it. I don't know why. I just like it. I like buildings and keys I guess and like like this thing right here this archway that's really cool. A curse can be many things. For the Everlies, it begins with Stardust. Ooh, it sounds so fun. I've been wanting some more fantasy standalones because I'm all about a series. I love a series, but sometimes I just want one story, you know, a little taste to read in between other things. And maybe I don't want to read, you know, four books of 800 pages each, you know. I mean, I do, just not all the time. So this will help break it up a little bit. That's a little, it's a little kind of messed up in the corner there but oh nice look at the end papers or end pages is it end papers or end pages i mean i guess it's not really oh well that's pretty too it has a little key on the front there they did kind of bang it up a little bit can you see that i mean it came from amazon that is the one good thing about buying books in person is you know exactly what condition it's in and it stays in that condition. It's kind of like a gamble when you order stuff online. Oh, I don't have the time or energy to be 
like driving around and going to all these different places but anyway that is that is so beautiful i can't wait to read that and i got my book of the month already you guys would have seen this already but yesterday i just no was it yesterday or the day before oh i think it was wednesday today oh no wait today's thursday so was it tuesday Oh my gosh, I don't even know anymore, but I <laughs> I recorded a book of the month breakdown kind of video where I announced the April releases, but I also give um, like a breakdown of how book of the month works and everything for people who aren't familiar with it, because I know some people don't have it or maybe they've heard of it, but they only hear the spiel that they give, you know, when people have a sponsorship and it's that script, they don't, they give a little bit of information, but not really like fully in depth, like what I would want to know if I were looking into it. So that's what I did. Basically made a video for past me, <laughs> but hopefully other people find it helpful too. But anyway, I just ordered this, so I am i can't believe it came here already. What's the date? Today's Thursday, the, um, the 4th. <laughs> I don't know what I should do. Should I count Bunny towards my March read since I read the bulk of it in March, but I finished it in April? Or maybe I should just review it for April. Because then it will be with the other books that I am reading for the Bunny Readathon. I kind of like to keep books grouped together like that. So yeah, maybe I'll just maybe I'll just review Bunny for April. Ooh. All right, let's see what the bookmark says. Page is just a number. Um, I don't really like that phrase. Age is just a number. I don't no, it gives me uh, creep creepy vibes, okay? Creepo vibes. Like you all know what I'm talking about, right? Like it's okay if you are adults, is what I'm saying. Anyway, dragon fruit. <sighs> yeah, that's so beautiful. And it goes all the way on the back too here. Even over the spine a little bit. Every wish demands a price. Ooh. Oh, my light just went out. This is like a pretty blue color. Seriously, it already died? Oh, wow. It's around 350 pages and it has a very large type. I wonder if that's because it's YA. Wow. It's like two paragraphs per page. I mean, that's going to be a super fast read. So maybe I can read it this month. I have plans to read four book of the month books this month. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and this is the other one that I got. And the other one I would also like to read this month. It's a thriller first lie wins. And I've heard pretty good things about this so far. Like I wasn't initially interested in it. I just kind of seemed like a generic, you know, thriller to me. But then some people that I watch and I mostly trust their opinions and reviews on books, they seem to really enjoy it. So hopefully I have fun with it too. Okay, so next up I am going to edit. I got to finish editing my book of the month video because it's going to be up tomorrow. And I have to add some photos and media to it. And then that will be done. And I, it's only about 10 minutes, maybe 11 minutes. But I've noticed that whenever I have a lot of like book covers or media that I've added, it usually takes longer. Like, oh my god, I remember the, the 35 anticipated releases that I did in December. I was maybe like 30 minutes long, I want to say. It took 12 hours to produce 12 hours and I had to keep like starting it over and over so it, was act it actually took longer than that it was just 12 hours from the time it like started for real like produce meaning like I got it from power director to YouTube and then once on YouTube it has to process for maybe like 45 minutes an hour and then it process again usually that one's a lot shorter like 15 minutes so the whole thing it took like a whole day it threw off my whole schedule so I'm really hoping that this one is not like that because it's only like 10 or 11 minutes so wish me luck and then once I get that all squared away and get my thumbnail all designed and everything then I can get back to reading all as well just got home from work and yes it's Friday 
I love the weekend, but it goes by so fast. But quick reading update on All's Well. I didn't get really that far into it. I'm only on page 55 because I've been annotating. I've been underlining things basically. And then what I started doing is I, I have a hardcover of this book as well. So I'm going to keep that copy clean. So that's why I'm writing in this one. But what I've been doing is I've been making notes after each chapter. The first one I just wrote things after I read the chapter but now I'm kind of starting to make little notes as I'm reading because I think of things I want to write down and remember so I like that idea. I guess it's similar to just writing in my reading journal only it's right in the book. And so following Miranda the theater professor she's still struggling with her chronic pain issues and we found out the reason why she has it. And I think I found out I'm getting hints as to why she wants to put on this play. And I, I want to be careful and not say too much because I don't know what would be spoilers or not. And I really think that the best part of reading is finding out for yourself. So it's kind of tricky. It's like I want to say enough to give thoughts about it. And if people were interested in it, I would want those people to read it. But I also don't want to spoil it. It's always a fine line to decide what to say about a book. But she was she was at a restaurant or a bar eating with her colleague and they ended up leaving and she was still there and she went up to the bar and she was kind of spacing out. She does that a lot. She does a lot of imagining and picturing and just like she's very much in her head quite a lot and all of a sudden she's at the bar there sitting and there's these three strange men that are sitting next to her. She spaces out and he's like, whoa, where'd you go there? You kind of like, you know, spaced out. And she's like, yeah, I guess I did. And he's like, wait, let me guess. And he literally said everything that she's been through, everything that she's tried, she's had to go to multiple doctors trying to get help for this and everybody has different ideas there's conflicting advice she tries everything nothing ever works and then people are somewhat sympathetic or empathetic with about her pain at first and then they kind of get tired of it because they think well it's just all in your head if you really wanted to get better you would just get better and so they end up kind of not really caring and I could relate to that part for sure um yeah that that definitely happens that people will be empathetic at first and then when they realize that oh this is a real thing and it's always going to be there they start blaming you for it so <laughs> yeah that's definitely relatable um, but anyway, one of the men gives her this golden beverage. She drinks it and all of her pain just disappears. And it's only temporary though. And so that's about where I am. Yeah, so that's that's about where I am so far with this book. Hopefully I can finish it by Sunday. Well, I want to finish it by then because I at least need to read Starbaker, which that looks like it could be a quick read. And then Alice in Wonderland, which would be a quick read, as well as I Am a Cat Barista manga. So, you know, that might take like a half hour to read. But I do need to finish editing my favorite thrillers of last year video that I'm planning to go up on Sunday. And then my favorite YA books of 2023 I'm planning to have up on Wednesday. And then I need to film my, oh, my March wrap up. And then something else, probably. And then March wrap up will go up on Friday the twelfth, at least. At least I'm trying to I'm trying to get up I'm trying to get videos up Wednesday and Friday mornings and then Sunday mornings as well. So hopefully that helps. Like hopefully it helps the channel in general. Oh, when I was planning on doing an art project, I was gonna try to find the audiobook for this and then do an art project while I listen to it. I do drawings and paintings. Like I use graphite just pencil, and I also use watercolor pencil and i like to make collages and one of my favorite things to do though is to make decorative boxes um okay i don't have like this is the closest thing to me but just to like explain it i don't make the box itself but i get like a wooden thing this is like a little kitty cat there's a little light in there but i'll paint stuff like this um 
if I remember, I'll pop in a picture of some stuff that I've made. Like one of the most recent things I made was a birdhouse for one of my sisters. Well, I didn't, again, I didn't make the birdhouse itself, but I painted it and I decorated it. I put moss all over it and cute little like figurines and I also put fairy lights in it and so it was so cute <laughs> so yeah I'll, I'll try to pop up some pictures right here so you can see get an example of stuff I like to make but in more exciting news book mail this is quite a small little book and I thought I was supposed to be getting book two you know, in that book of the month book that I got, uh, The Keeper of Night, the second book, The Empress of Time, was supposed to be delivered today, but this is kind of small. So, let's see. I mean, that has to be it. Oh, it is. Oh. Oh. Look how cute that is. Yeah, this would not match like the first one if I still had the book of the month edition that thing is huge it's like this big you know you know how big a book of the month book is like that would look totally weird next to that I'm so glad I got like the same edition of the first one so they can I love little books like this they're so cute don't need that I don't want to read the synopsis since it's the second book in the series oh my god my light's gonna go out that looks so cool can't wait to read it. How many pages is it? 405, but they're little, so it'll probably be a quick read. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do now is the rain cleared up, so I think go for a walk. I try to go for a mile-long walk every day. When I used to live in the country, it was really nice to go on a walk because it was really quiet, nice fresh air. I got to walk by my little cow friends. And then here, it's just, I don't know, you know, traffic and nobody around here knows how to drive. I get almost hit pretty much every time I'm walking. Oh my God. And then the last time I went on a walk, was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was the day before. I went on a walk and I was coming back and somebody's pit bull was just out roaming around like about to get hit by cars. At first I thought the dog belonged to some kids on a bike, but then he just like kept running around. I'm like okay that's weird and then i noticed the second the dog saw me he like saw me and he started like coming towards me i'm like oh no i am not about to get mauled by a pit bull right now are you kidding me so i like bolted across the street and there was a guy over there i'm like if something happens maybe he'll help me i don't know so i like go over there and he's like looking at me kind of like whoa is that like your dog or something and i'm like dude no and then the dog got distracted by something else, so I started like running, and then it like came up to me. Like it started to come up to me even closer, so I bolted. I ran. <sighs> I was so terrified because like it's a good thing it didn't come after me because really it could have taken me down. Like I'm pretty tiny, like maybe I'm taller than average, but I'm just small in general. Like that dog could have taken me down. And you know what happens with pit bull jaws? Like, I've seen, unfortunately, with my own eyes, what those dogs can do. Okay, and look, I know people say, oh, pit bulls get a bad rap and stuff. I'm like, I don't like dogs coming up to me in general, okay? I don't trust them. Most of them are bigger than me. They have teeth. I don't want to get mauled by a freaking dog. Like, I don't understand why that's, like, not a valid concern. You know, like, I'm not going to be cruel to a dog or hate on anybody, but look, that happens, okay? And are you going to be as scared if a little poodle is chasing after you? A little Pomeranian, a Chihuahua? No, it's not going to be the same thing. Whew. Anyway, <laughs> that kind of like traumatized me. Now I'm worried about walking by that area again. Man, that really pisses me off. I cannot stand it when people let their dogs out. Or if they're like taking them on a walk and they're not on a leash, like keep your dogs on a freaking leash. I don't care how friendly you think your dog is. You need to be considerate. Okay? That's all. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm going to go for a walk, come back, have a snack, some tea, read, and then do a little editing. So I will catch up with y'all later.
So as you saw in the last clip, I started reading Alice in Wonderland. I'm still reading all's well, but I have a lot of editing I need to get done today. So I wanted to read a book I could finish today. And I'm already at the mad tea party scene. So it's almost halfway. Oh no, I'm a, I'm a little bit more than halfway. And I kept falling asleep, even though I'm interested in the story and I didn't think I was tired. I just kept falling asleep. So I thought, what better time to make tea than at the mad tea party scene? That's one of my favorite scenes, that scene and the caterpillar scene. I love those ones. But anyway, so, I mean, we all know what this is about, right? So I did get some book mail, so let's open that up. And these aren't like new books. These are the books, or they should be. The books that I had to get better copies of because the first ones are horrible <laughs> or one of the copies was had the spine broken which I think is this one and the other one I got the book of the month edition when I didn't want that and okay so this is a pretty big heavy book and they mail it in just a plastic envelope thing not even a bubble mailer why do they do that like even bubble mailers sometimes book get books get damaged in. Okay, this one looks a little better. The Passage by Justin Cronin. This is the beginning of a horror series. I think it's a trilogy. So far, so good. Let's see. Yeah, no broken spine on this one. Good. So now this one will be readable. The other one I may have to just put in a little free library. I'll put a little note in there saying that spine is broken. Maybe somebody will be okay with that since it's free for them. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Otherwise, I don't really know what to do with it. And then we got one in a box. So I always appreciate that because one, it usually is less likely to be damaged. And also I can reuse these when I finally get my Pango account and I can ship out books I'm selling. I have tried, well, no, I did get a Pango account, but in order to sell, you have to have the app and neither of my two phones have the ability to do that. One of my phones has a space, but Google Play keeps like closing out and it won't let me download it. And then on my other phone, it will let me do it, but I don't have enough memory on that phone for another app. Like I barely got Audible on there and Hoopla. And I kind of need those because it's audiobooks, especially Audible since I have an account and you need internet to listen to it. And my other phone is Wi-Fi only. It's like it's like my old phone that got a cracked screen so I could still use it when I have Wi-Fi. And it's also the phone that I use for filming and editing on since I have space. Anyway, <laughs> I need to figure out a way to get more space on my main phone. The only thing is... If I had the ability to choose to put the app on my SD card, it would be just fine. I have enough space on my SD card on my main phone, but it will only go to just phone memory. And I don't have enough of that. So it's really annoying because I really need to sell these books. I have at least, I want to say more than 50 books. And I've been wanting to do an unhaul video, but I want to wait until I get my account because I want to link that. You know, so if people see any books they want to get, they can do that. So this should be the Keeper of Night. The non-book of the month edition. Wow, and there's paper in here too? Packing paper? No, what? Dude, I ordered it brand new. And it's a book of the month edition. Brand new. I don't understand what's going on. Does this book only exist as book of the month? I'm so confused because the second book is a smaller one, not book of the month. Dude, I don't want a book of the month edition and it was listed as brand new, not book of the month. Is this book only book of the month? And if that were the case, why didn't they make the second one also book of the month so they match? And it has a sticker on the back here. Like, that's not what brand new books have. What is going on? Great, now I have to figure that out. So I'm about to start on my art project. I decided to go with an easy thing because I still have a lot to do today. So I'm going to be painting this little kitty cat right here. 
And then while I'm painting that, I'm going to listen to the audiobook for Starve Acre. You guys, I found a free audiobook for it here on YouTube. I can't believe it. That is so awesome. I just happened to look on a whim and there actually is one and it's a little over an hour long. So I'll probably listen to it at 1.25 speed because I have very little daylight left. And then once I finish painting that, then I will read I Am A Cat Barista. So I'm not gonna film like during the whole process because it's really warm in here. I need to have a fan on and that noise is gonna be really annoying also. I need to charge my phone because I just filmed my March wrap up and the battery is getting low. So I got to charge this phone. So I will just show you progress as I go along. Hey y'all quick update. So I just did some of the lighter colors that I'm going to be doing. I did this base coat. It's not opaque white. It's more an iridescent white, but I forgot that I had these absolutely beautiful iridescent colors. So I found these. So. I switched out the colors I had previously, so I'm going to be using these like jewel toned iridescent. They're almost like duochromes. They're so beautiful. So now I am extra excited to get this done. Okay, another quick little update. So I have the color on. I also did the yarn on the back. So I'm about to paint the kitty black and then I think I may do this gloss I have over it. I had this iridescent medium pulled out, but because the color themselves are iridescent, I don't think I will need it. But I think what I'll do is basically seal everything in and protect it with this triple thick glaze stuff. I love this stuff. It really works well with my wooden boxes. It helps protect it. Also, quick update on the audiobook for Star of Acre. It must be an abridged version because I was trying to follow along in the book and I kept getting lost and then I was I was like, okay, what is going on? And then I was literally following along, reading it while listening and it does not match up. So that could be why it's such a short audiobook. It's an hour and 11 minutes long, so... I mean, I'm sure this would be at least two or three hours. So yeah, so just heads up, I will link the audiobook down below in the description, but it is an abridged version, so that's too bad. This is another box that I painted. I got this at Target a while ago in their like dollar section. So I painted each of the, the outsides one color and the top that purple color and then I did the accent color on the bottom and then it just slides open like that I painted the inside a different color like a bluish purple instead of just straight purple and then the inside I did a lime green on the edge a darker green on the inside and this is a this is like a paper a decorative paper that I glued in there and then I painted over it with just a clear iridescent and then the outside this is actually a card one of those blank like note cards and I just cut it out to fit the shape glued it on and then I put that gloss glaze over all of it so that way it's nice and protected and it stays on and then this won't get damaged since it's paper and then also that way it slides in and out nicely of course I did sand this down a little bit before I painted it it did need that but now I wish I would have got a couple more of these because then I would have glued them together and stacked them up and it would have been like a little mini dresser, you know? <laughs> but um, it has a little bit of dust on it. But yeah, I love that gloss glaze stuff. Okay, here we go. I have most of it done. All the color on and then the black for the kitty cat. I just did the back like that. So I'm going to wait for the black to totally dry and then I'm going to draw on the whiskers in a lighter iridescent color so they stand out and then I will do the final glaze. And I did finish the audiobook of Starve Acre so that was pretty creepy. Um, it is definitely a book that I would want to read physically though so I may end up doing that since I wanted to read it for springtime anyway, but at least I technically got it done for the readathon. It's the last day, it's Sunday, so I'm going to read the manga while I let this dry a little bit, and then I will come back and finish it up. 
Just want to show you how cute and cozy this is. This is I Am A Cat Barista manga. This is volume two. There's only two volumes of it out so far, so I don't know if it's going to continue or if that's it. <laughs> I mean, I would be okay with a little kitty cat barista. It's very cozy. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. It's a, it's a cat cafe where it appears just magically out of nowhere, but only for weary souls. So let's say you're having a really bad day, you're walking home from work, and all of a sudden you see a door for a cafe that you've never seen before. You go in there, there's a cat barista, and he listens to you, and he gives you good advice. He knows exactly what kind of beverage you need. He doesn't even need to ask you. And then he makes you feel better. So... Yeah, super cute. We love kitty cats in this house, huh, Penny? Huh, Princess Penny? Oh, sorry, I have to have the flash on. Oh, that's a cute little yawn. Sorry, I have to have the flash on. But we gotta be able to see you, because you're so dark. And then little Fritzy. <laughs> he likes to sit on my pillow. So, Fritzy, tell me. Oh, my knees just cracked like crazy. So, Fritzy, tell me, have you been a good boy today? No, not at all. Yeah, I know. You were absolutely horrible this morning. You kept me up all night and morning. Like, wow. Such in an extra mood. You made me sleep through my alarm. And I missed the bunny -a thon discussion. I wanted to talk about bunny with everybody live. You made me miss it. He feels no guilt, no shame. How nice it must be to be a kitty cat. Oh, penny stretch. <laughs> the little scratch post I got for them, it looks like a palm tree, and they don't even use it for scratching. They just kind of sit on it. And the reason why I got them that scratch post is because they do like to use this thing, but it's like cardboard. And it gets ripped up and then all over the carpet. So I was like, hey, let me get them this cute scratch post. <laughs> and they don't even use it. And I tried to show them, like, with their paws, and they kind of got freaked out by it. So, well, there goes that. Well, hopefully you can hear me over the laundry machines. The geniuses who built this house decided to add the laundry machines right here in the kitchen. So hopefully it's not too loud and you can hear me. But I thought I would make some tea while I read I Am A Cat Barista and have my laundry going. Figured, you know, apropos, little tea while I'm reading, you know, Cat Barista. You get it, you get it. Anyway. I do love a tea kettle, one of those old-fashioned ones that you put on the stove, but somebody from a while ago got me this, so I might as well use it. So it's an electric kettle. I have my bag here, my Earl Grey, Dunkin' Creamer that I'm going to put in there, and then all I do, I already have it set to the temperature, I think it's like 212 or something, and then I just set it and it goes off for maybe a couple minutes, and then I'm ready to steep my tea.
done with the kitty cat. I finished off the whiskers. Oh, the flash. Hold on. There we go. I finished off the little whiskers there. And then I added the glaze or the gloss. It's called the gloss glaze. I guess it's both. There we go. I turned the little light on inside. <laughs> That's cute. So it looks like the eyes and the nose are glowing. That's cute. Well, hello, bunnies. So that concludes the readathon. It actually ended yesterday, but I thought I would do a quick little wrap up of everything I did in the vlog, go over the books I read. But first, I would like to thank Mary in Brooklyn for hosting this readathon. I love readathons, they are always so motivating and fun, and I love a good theme. Usually, I don't read all the books I want to, but that's okay. I still had fun, and I read three books that were already on my spring TBR, so there you go. Oh, but you know what? First, before we get into a recap of the books that I read, book mail! <laughs> okay, so this is supposed to be The Keeper of Night, but not the book of the month edition. Now, it is in a little smaller box. I hate to get my hopes up. Let's see, who wants to make a bet? Who wants to make a bet that this is book of the month again, the third time? Please no. Oh, easy open, right. Just lose all your nails. Okay, I don't think I was supposed to do it that way. Pull to open. Pull what? This is bizarre. Okay, it looks promising. <gasps> Finally! Ah! Yes, I'm so excited. Now they match. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted was this one. That's it? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so glad I got this. Yes, I'm so glad I got the right one. Okay. Okay, so now on to the books that I read. I did a reread of Bunny, and I annotated quite a bit in it, so this will be in my April wrap-up. I also read Alice in Wonderland. I love this story so much. An old childhood favorite. This will also be in my April wrap-up. And then I listened to the abridged audiobook for Starve Acre, and... Uh, I really want to read it physically, so I will still read it physically sometime this month because I wanted to read it anyway, and I don't think that I'll get the full experience if I don't do that, so that's what I'm going to do. And while I was listening to the audiobook for this, I painted this cute little wooden kitty cat. So I use this iridescent duochrome, so it's a black kitty, of course, uh, like a fuchsia color yarn. I did lime green eyes like a very light blue purple nose little white whiskers and then a teal collar there and i just did that on the back i contemplated painting the little pieces right here on the inside so i may still do that we'll see and then it lights up as well can you see that a little bit yeah well anyway you saw in that one clip oh yeah and then i made the pink little bunny rabbits when I was reading Bunny. And then after I painted the little kitty cat, I read I Am A Cat Barista manga. I thought that was fitting. This was super cute. You saw some of those clips I included in this one. And then I also read Part of All's Well, but I did not finish it yet. Let's see, I'm on page 63. So yeah, this is taking me a little longer because I'm annotating it. And also it does take a little bit more time to do more videos, which is fine. I mean, it's fun for me. It's just this takes a little bit longer. But I'm still going to finish it this month, so this will be in my April wrap-up, as well I'm a Caprista. So all in all, I would say it was a success and a lot of fun. Let me know if you participated in the Bunny Readathon and what you ended up reading, any kind of other activities you did, and if you are going to be posting a vlog as well, let me know. Of course, if I'm subbed to you, I'm going to be watching it anyway, but you know, just in case. We don't know that you have a channel. Let us all know down below and we'll all go watch it. And thank you all so much for watching this Bunny-a-thon vlog and I will see you soon.